Hello and welcome to the video. This is the first video in a new series and something that I'm personally looking forward to a lot. Now I've done a couple of builds already in the middle of the various lockdowns that we're having here in the UK. We're in the middle of lockdown 3.0 and I must admit I am struggling a little bit kind of keeping my normally happy chirpy demeanor. I think lots of us are in the same boat. The lack of ability to go and do the things that you normally do, uh, being stuck indoors and all that stuff is just taking a toll. You know, we're looking at the thick end of a year of doing this now and the novelty has definitely worn off. So I'm very pleased to have a project like this in to spend a week building and having an awful lot of fun. And this time it's for a slightly different model. This time it's for this thing. Well, this is on the wing of it, I guess. This is the Vortigaunt 2. This is from E-Wings. It is another model similar to this thing behind me. Uh, the Vortigaunt is not a new model. It's been around for a long time. The Vortigaunt 2 is brand spanking new. And as you can tell, uh, it's a very kind of different idea. It's a pretty regular aerofoil for this. So the wings are generating lift very different from its sister ship, the Black Hawk. Uh, but this new version, updated version has some cool differences from the one that's been kicking around for a long time. So in this one, what I'll do is first of all, talk about what's different between this version two of the Vortigaunt and the one that you may have seen on other channels. Then I'll talk about my plan, what I intend to do with it, um, because it's gonna end up looking very similar to the one behind it. I am gonna laminate this, put kind of the automotive film on top, the carbon fiber effect, I'm probably going to shoot for the same kind of black and orange scheme so they look like sister ships when they're on the flight line. But uh, because this is uh, with these big wings, kind of really, really fab at things like endurance flying, uh, the setup's going to be a little bit different. And then I'll go through all the electronic pieces. I'll put links below to everything that I'm planning on using in this, uh, particularly as I had lots of fun uh, kind of figuring out power systems and stuff with this. E-wings are very, very good. On the website, they do tell you uh, the recommended motors and props and stuff like that. And I'm kind of going along with one of the recommendations. So first of all, let's start with what is difference between uh, this and the original Vortigaunt that you may have seen. The Vortigaunt 2, the central body, uh, if you've already watched the Black Hawk build, will feel very, very familiar. It's basically the same central piece now as is in the Black Hawk. So in here, you have a massive long battery bay and you have a bay at the back for electronics. Uh, now with this, I am gonna be using, I'm gonna be putting a HD uh, FPV system on this. Uh, unlike that, um, just like to swap and change it because I'd still fly both. Um, and without having to put a receiver and other things in here, there's loads enough room. Probably going to end up putting the ESC in exactly the same place out here in the back. It's perfect for keeping it cool in airflow. But this slightly narrower body, but slightly longer, uh, also gives us a couple of other benefits as well. The way the wings attached is different. In this body, there are the two spars uh, which come in the kit. Uh, in fact, while I'm talking about this, let me run the video of me actually unboxing this thing. Um, the spars come in the kit with all the other pieces and the spars go in here. So there's a, a forward and rear spar that go into the wings. Now, the nice thing about that is it does make it an awful lot easier to make the wings removable because the wings underneath have the channels cut in for the carbon fiber rods and they're cut in in the same way as on the Black Hawk where there's a slight taper. So they grab on to the carbon fiber rods to, which is, makes it a lot easier for me to make it so the wings are removable. And because this is a pretty broad wingspan, I'm going to need that in order to kind of carry it up and down mountains and in the back of my car and things like that. So for me, having the wings removable is really important. Now, if I really wanted to, I could attach a little piece of Velcro underneath the wing and kind of embed a piece in the side of the body to make sure it doesn't come undone. Uh, but in the flying that I've been doing with my Black Hawk, the wings have not come off and that's been doing some pretty hard aerobatics and hard moves and the wings just stay on. Uh, and this I expect will be exactly the same. The wings are a little bit longer than the original uh, Vortigaunt, just to give you that wingspan. Uh, so the wings are slightly different too. 
And as you saw in the unboxing, then you get also the vertical stabilizers, uh, two of those. I'm gonna cover these in the same kind of orange film. And then uh, we have the two covers, one for the battery hatch and one for the electronics hatch. Exactly the same as this little fella here. So I'm going to follow along in terms of the build. And if you look at the new manual, the new manual looks, feels and smells very much like uh, this build here because with the exception of putting these cheek pieces on, uh, the build is the same. The central body is built in the same way. The wings are kind of built in the same way. There's a lot of similarity. Uh, the only real difference is the way the vertical stabilizers attach and the fact you don't have these cheek pieces that you glue onto the side of the central body. So with that said, let me talk about the electronics that I'm gonna use in this. Uh, lots of this stuff is already kind of kicking about. I've got some extra pieces in. I've also reclaimed a flight controller from a wing that I built a long time ago that I'm not going to be using anymore. I'm gonna be using this. This is a trusty Matek F405 wing. I love the wing series of flight controllers for fixed wing models. Gonna stick iNav on it. I've already flashed it with iNav on the bench to make sure it's gonna be happy. This originally had Ardu Pilot on, and I'm gonna put a nice eight gig SD card in the side so that I can record the iNav logs to use with things like Dashware so that I can have my on-screen display and speed and height and information and all that jazz when I finish the flight. Going to be using a Matek GPS, exactly the same one that I used uh, on the original Black Hawk, that's working fantastically well. It's a nice spot to sit it there. Uh, it's not too heavy and it's nice and easy to do to run the cables without getting everything in the way. For the ESC, I've got a choice of two. Uh, there's the Turner G50 Amp ESC, the same one that I've used in the Black Hawk, which is working very well. Or I've also got in uh, one of these things. This is the new T-Motor. 80, 55 amp, uh, up to 6S ESC. Now T-Motor have started making a lot of new uh, stuff aimed at the cheaper end. Um, this ESC, uh, T-Motor stuff is just really good quality. And even this stuff that's aimed at entry level, I'll talk about the, uh, the motor in a minute, um, still just reeks of the same kind of T-Motor quality. I think T-Motor do struggle to make anything that doesn't work well. For me at the moment, I'm not sure which of these I'm going to use. Uh, it just depends on how it's all going to fit. Either of these would be a fantastic choice because the maximum amp draw for the system that I'm going to put on here is going to be about 35, 36, 37 amps total. So while we're talking about that, let's talk about the motor and prop. Now, as I said, the motor that I'm actually using here, uh, there were two options. First of all, I was going to use the original thousand kV motor. This is the sunny sky one that I originally had on this model. It wasn't quite enough for this race style wing, but it actually could be very efficient on something like this. However, I've decided that I want something with a little bit more poke and it was an, an opportunity to try these things. Now I've had lots of really good feedback from people about these. These are the T motor AS series. It says for the entry level, but the actual motor itself is just absolutely beautiful. There's no other word for it really. It's just gorgeous. And on the top of that, I've got an Aeronaut folding prop. I've gone for the Aeronaut nine by six for this with a 34 millimeter yoke. Again, all of the links are down below. Uh, that should give me quite a bit of poke on the back of this, but also allow me to cruise at a reasonable amount of throttle as well. Last couple of parts of this, I'm going to be using the Turner G servos again. They have worked brilliantly in this. Uh, these are 225MG. Um, I, again, have got more than I need. I always order more than I actually need to make sure uh, that I'm not going to install uh, a, a dodgy one. I would always, with these cheap and cheerful the quality is actually not bad. If they don't fail within the first uh, kind of 10, 15 minutes of exercising, they're probably gonna last for months and months and months of flying. I would always recommend with cheaper servos like this, put them through a servo checker, uh, exercise them, make sure that if they're gonna fail, they're gonna fail on the bench, make sure they're super smooth, they're notchy when you um, hold the output 
uh, and, and try and resist it turning. It doesn't um, kind of slip and you haven't got any teeth missing. Um, I really like these. You can spend a lot more money. The high-tech ones are beautiful, but they're kind of five times the price. Um, I am quite happy with these, but again, with the caveat being test them on the bench, make sure that they are happy before you put them in a model and they let you down and it compromises the whole thing. I know for some, they wouldn't even imagine doing this way. Personally, I, I'm quite happy. I've been building long enough. I'm quite happy to kind of put these through its paces on the bench, make sure it's all working and then put any thing that happens on the bench when I'm testing these that I'm not comfortable with, I'll just immediately throw it in the bin. Uh, that's why I've got a couple of extra ones. And that leaves the last thing that's going to go in it, and that is uh, a Vista kit. So it's going to be uh, Nebula Micro, which the performance of which I did do a video on. The performance of the Nebula Micro, I think, in terms of the overall image, is nowhere near as nice, in my humble opinion, as the real GGI camera that you can get on the system. It's more like a racer camera style. You can tweak things on it that make it perform slightly differently but this will be fine for this model. So this is going to go uh, up into the nose uh, with the camera by the side. So it's gonna sit, try and do it so you can see what I'm doing, kind of like, like that uh, embedded into a piece of foam. Now I am potentially going to, as part of this, uh, show how you could set it up so you could have it on a on a pan servo. Uh, there isn't quite enough meat in this um, to set it up with a pan servo. I might initially do it as stationary and then if I get excited later on. But it, it, the idea I think, and this was a suggestion by a Patreon, I'll, I'll put a thank you to the bottom of this because uh, at the moment I haven't got the, the, the nest message in front of me. But uh, he was saying, why don't you use the rudder control, which of course I'm not going to use because this is a flying wing, um, to control the pan of uh, a servo that would give you the pan option. So rather than being a head trackery thing, which you could set up if you're using cross wire and stuff, but I don't want to on this, um, you could absolutely set it up. I might do a quick video while I've got all the pieces out and I'm building this week. So as I do the videos, they'll be going into the playlist, check it out, um, and they'll be coming out over February. Hopefully they'll keep you entertained. And then we'll get to the end and we'll give it a nice maiden. If I can get this, so that she'll run nicely on something like Lithium Iron as well. That would be amazing. However, you know, a 20 minute, half an hour flight of something like this, uh, I would be very happy with. And I think that's very realistic with the kind of setup that I'm going to end up with. So join me in the next video. First job is going to be to start putting all of this together, uh, cleaning up the foam and starting to glue the things together and uh, following the new build manual that I've just had in from E-Wings. Again, it's going to feel very much like Deja Vu if you've already watched the Black Hawk build, but it should be fun to see how she flies at the end and what it all looks like when it's all finished. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.